Hi everyone and welcome to another Camera Jabber video. Today I'm talking to Stephen Neeson who is a wedding and portrait photographer based in Northern Ireland. Hi Stephen, how are you? Hi, yeah, uh, how's it going? Uh, thanks very much for having me on today, I really appreciate it. That's all right, you're looking very well. I'm, oh yes, I've got the, got the comfies on, I've got the Ad Adidas stuff and I'm just like uh, living the home life. As <laughs> <like that. laughs> <laughs> normally, normally it's a shirt and tie, and um, right. you know now it's the comfies. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's. I think it's a good approach to be comfortable when you're you're working yeah. from home. Absolutely. <laughs> so I wanted to speak to you because I know that um, you're always pushing yourself creatively, and you're always challenging yourself to do uh, capture different images. And I spotted recently that you've been well. You started out. You said you shooting through things to create more interesting uh, portrait images, and I thought it'd be great to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So as a wedding photographer, I'm always, you know, trying to do things uh, different. And from the very beginning, I've I've realised that you know if I could show a client something that was different, then yeah, I always get that. A wow factor response from them and you know to me that's that's kind of what I want to to, to get from them you know because it you know it gives them that element of surprise and oh look at this photographer has done for us so you know over the years I've built up you know ideas in my head that I can shoot through um, I'm always looking for reflections and and photo frames on walls through windows um, if I'm in a hotel asking the staff to bring glasses out to me um, shooting through ashtrays, shooting through different things like this and you know it, it was uh, I used to carry things along with me um, in my camera bag up until the lockdown really um, I you know have a prism in my camera bag which is about 10 inches long I would imagine um, sets of glasses I even had plastic uh, champagne flutes in my, in my uh, bag at one stage and, um, and then you know through, through time you get so used to shooting with this you know and obviously it makes nice images but um, during lockdown then I I decided to purchase the lens baby Omni and have a go because I you know I'd seen it before uh, seen reviews but I never actually used it so I I purchased one of those locally and uh, well sorry online and um, decided to do some shots with my kids and then thought I might as well document these so I've been making them into YouTube videos and uh you know, I found I found the whole system just like amazing because it's so small, and you you know you can fit it all into your camera bag. You wouldn't know it was there. The difference in that really is having plastic champagne flutes in your camera bag. Whenever they fall out, and a bride or groom says, "What are you doing?" You know, it's like, <laughs> "Oh, they're to shoot through," or you know, or like um, the, these wee glasses. Like I bought these for a pound. I think they're reading glasses. I used to keep these. They don't even fit my head. You know, they're like. But these were literally to shoot through, um, you know, to try and get the effects. And really, the the Omni does all of that. Uh, yeah. So um, these can kind of be all these things are chucked now. In fact, um, I actually cut myself with the the prism that I had. Um, I dropped it and chipped the end off it. Um, I cut myself, and because like I wear a, a sport like a suit jacket and weddings. Um, I used to put it in there and I ripped a hole in like about three different good jackets simply because of that thing. So now I can, now I know that I can get all those things chucked away. Um, yeah. And you know. I guess the other thing that's useful um, is because like if you, if you're trying to shoot through champagne flutes or, or glasses, you've got to hold them as well, haven't you? I mean, do you put your oh, camera on a tripod or are you hand holding and then waving these things around? Oh, no. Like, I'm sure people have looked at me and thought, what an absolute idiot. You know, holding holding my camera and like a, a prism or two or three glasses and uh, dropping them and you know it's just hard. <laughs> so, um, you know, I ended up trying to put them on a table most of the time or shooting off a bar or whatever. With this, there's none of that. You can shoot with one hand. You know, it's just mm -hmm. it's, it's so good that way. Um, I don't know why I didn't buy it sooner. To be honest. <laughs> it does sound like it was made for you if you were going around shooting with, through, through glasses and things. Um, oh, have you got the Omni there that you could show people, please? I do, yes, absolutely. So, um, well, first of all, it comes and you get these wee pouches, so, uh, which has the Velcro in the back, so it, like, it can just slip into your bag. Um, but the, the main part of it, which screws onto the end of your camera, is this, really. 
So that um, screws on just like a filter th um, holder, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You have the different uh, ring, the different sizes for your particular lens, um, which screws up on the inside of this, and then that just screws in, just like a filter, mm -hmm. you say. Um, and then the wee magnet, there's magnets that sit on that filter ring, uh, and then these wee arms just go on like with magnets. Yeah, just snap on. Yeah, and then you get the yeah, they call they call these wands. So um, the wand literally just goes on with the magnet there, like that. So once that's on your camera, it's it's sturdy. Like wind mm -hmm. won't move it, or you know, shaking about won't move it. They just stay there. So you can you can you can uh, you know put it into position and then just shoot. So you've got your other hand free. It's it's really good actually. You know, yeah. um, you know, and the, there's different wands for different effects and. I've just been I've just been experimenting with these, putting them into wee videos. I've been shooting with my kids and uh, with my dog and shooting wedding rings. And mm -hmm. I'm going to do have, another shoot today. Have you got a favourite wand yet, or are you just sort of playing with them all and finding out which you you like best? Do you know what? Like I've I've uh, every time I test one, I think this is my favourite one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I done a video on like a rainbow uh, mm -hmm. effect, and you know I think because of the whole like situation at the minute that that got me going. I was like, oh, this mm -hmm. is my favorite one, putting like rainbow effect into into the the photograph. So that that is good, yes. But um, to be honest, they're all good in their, in their own uh, their own right. Uh, if you made me pick one, I would might say the prism simply because I yeah. use that quite a lot. Yeah. You know? And yeah. say it's nice and neat, and it, the fact that you because you can move it around the ring and you can tilt it to different angles and catch yeah, the light. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have you've got a short uh, extension and a long extension, obviously for uh, different focal lengths, you know. But mm -hmm. um, I have uh, you can put two on at once, which I was shooting with the other day. So you could put the you could put the prism on and use that to like mirror part of the photograph and then put a rainbow effect through the top or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. You can actually see the rainbow effect. Yeah, there. can see it there. Yeah, uh, it's just so easy to work with, you know, and you can leave that on your camera like all day if you want it. Like it's not going to make a huge difference really, you know. Um, yeah, I'll just, say just looks like antenna coming off your... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Daily boppers. So, could we have a look at some of the images that you've shot using these? Ones? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, I've uh, the purpose of these images have been more so, um, but they're personal, you know. So, like, I'm not, in a sense, been worried so much about. You know, this has to be my style and showing my style to my clients. And like at the end of the day, I want to look back at these images as times of uh, of the lockdown time. And mm -hmm. so I've I've like uh, I've been shooting with the the kids and the dog and things. But I'll, I'll share my screen. Oh yes, yeah, so we just got a little bit of rainbow effect. Yeah, this the sort of across the snout. Yeah, so the this um, I was actually using two of the ones on this. So the rainbow or the the colour, the card or the rainbow one, I call it the rainbow one, I don't know what the correct term is for it. Um, it was on one side and then I had one of the sort of flatter glass ones on the other side. Um, but yeah, this this is my uh, this is my dog Margo and um, she's a very lazy big big dog and um, <laughs> you know I I uh, done some of these photographs and then decided to put them into a video just to show you know, the purpose of these wands to me can be using them in a situation where things maybe aren't so uh, aesthetically pleasing, you might want to say. And like my back garden is one of those. It's not as if like, I don't mm -hmm. live in a palace. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, just went into a, an area of my garden and was able to shoot using uh, these wands and create really nice photographs. And like the purpose, you know, really helps. See, to be honest, as a wedding photographer, like I have to go into people's houses and make do with what I have, and I don't want that to sound offensive to anybody's house, but it's just the way it is. Sometimes you go in and there's clutter everywhere, and you, it, 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 clients don't. Well, want your you clients to aren't that. photographers, are they? So they don't really know, you know, what you're looking for. So Absolutely. it's easy to go and work with yeah. it, isn't it? 
Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, these, these uh, wands are perfect for mm. you know, blocking areas out and creating, if you put a flare over them is you're, you're in a sense blocking an area out, you know? So, yeah. Uh, yeah so this is, uh, this is um, Margo. These are the ones that I have shot of her. Um, it's just and it a, does add a really nice summer vibe as well, doesn't it? It does. It really does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's looking at me as if, what are you doing? <laughs> she's gonna chew one of those ones yeah that was one of one of the warm days so she mm -hmm. was planting a lot it's quite a mm -hmm. big dog you know um yeah and then this one uh was using the prism mm -hmm. the prism type one uh which is the it's got three 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 edges on it two sort of longer ones one short one and then um, i done this one morning uh, just before the kids started their their homeschooling, and asked Charlie if he would model for me. And like this is again, this is just at the end of the sofa in my house, and I was you know framing this so that Charlie was quite small in a sense on mm. one side and blocking in the other area, and trying to get like a mirrored effect as well. So um, you can see actually, uh, you know what it does. Like yeah, I'm reflecting from the window. You can see the you can see the window of the house down at the bottom corner, you know. Yeah. Um, but I particularly love I love this one because of the mirrored effect that you can get on it. And in fact, whenever I was shooting this, uh, I ended up trying to be more creative and shooting in the reflection part of the image rather than uh, Charlie himself, which yeah. you should be able to see here. So, like that's just Charlie sitting on my sofa. Uh, Again, not don't live in a palace, so it's just quite a plain looking house, and it just shows you how you can get some lovely images. You obviously shot that with quite wide aperture. Yeah, so um, with all I've been shooting uh, with a, I've shot this whole sort of series as such with a 55 1.8 lens, a Sony um, mm -hmm. lens, and um, I've shot them all wide open at 1.8, and I think that's you know quite you sort of need to, don't you, to get these effects? You need to be shooting wide open. Um, you need yeah, to be right help open. isolate your subject as well. So, like, least, like you say, if the background's a bit cluttered, it can really help. A hundred percent, yeah. So that's you, is that, sorry, just to interrupt you. Is that on a full frame camera you're shooting as well? Yes. Well, my main camera is a Sony A9, so right. um, that's what that's kind of my my go to camera. Mm -hmm. You can see these. Uh, I, I do have a photograph where I shot in the in the reflection. It's quite interesting. Actually. It's quite dreamy looking. I, I didn't put it yeah, in this Yeah, it's, it's kind of dreamy and it suits the fact it could be dreaming or, or sort of thinking and the, having the reflection there works well. Yeah. Um, this is another day we went out for our, our, our daily walk and mm -hmm. um, there's a field beside my a field, a kind of field or a park type thing beside my house. And um, <laughs> We Harry, God love him, he is like absolutely full of the cold and he's, he keeps licking his lips because he's got the cold, you know, and he wasn't on form that day. He's normally, this is normally Harry, this is this is him mm -hmm. posing, he's, he's normally, a, he's a, quite like a doing Tai Chi. Yeah, he's quite a trendy wee guy, you know, and he's, he's only four like, so, but he, yeah. he, loved, he loves getting his picture taken too. Um, so yeah, uh, this this is a I put all these ones this day in the black and white and honestly I was just experimenting with the with the wands and trying to get different effects and see what they do really you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you know shooting into light was a important factor you know of you know positioning you know if you shoot into the light as opposed to away from it the the wands do different things you know and it's all about positioning and sort of learning how to position your subject, you know, and what, what way to put the wand over your uh, over your camera lens. For example, in the house, I, I put the wand, attached it to the left of the lens uh, and put it over toward the light. And I found that gave me the, uh, whenever I was shooting that way, that gave me the best results, um, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's the the mirrored one uh, again. That's him. Just <laughs> he wouldn't pose for me at this stage. He was like, "I want to go home. I want to go home." I was like, "Just stand in front of the tree a wee second, and we'll get another shot." Um, and the glass just mirroring off the the tree. It's quite interesting the effect you can get, you know, with such a small attachment. You know, yeah, it looks like he's stood on the edge of a pond almost. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, I, I also done uh, a few shots one day with my wife's wedding rings and one of her shoes, just mm -hmm. to try and practice uh, using these in that setting so that whenever I go back to shooting weddings, I can, you know, yeah know which one to use or what to do and I again I shot this with the 55 mil lens it's not it's not a macro lens uh just tried to block out certain areas this was just a, a, a tabletop in my house a wardrobe sorry mm -hmm. um yeah so you can see there uh the effect that it has I can't remember what one this was but you can see I think it was the is it a seahorse you call it oh yeah mm-hmm yeah, and it kind of... Like a crystal-shaped, well, yeah, a seahorse-shaped crystal. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, it, you, can, you can see that it sort of makes everything in the background appear that it's there three or four times, you know. It's actually, mm -hmm. it's actually really good. But, yeah, that, that, was, that was just a, a few photographs with the rings. And, um, I like that one. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's my light in the background, just, you know. Right. Yeah. It's, and do you know, it gives you something different. It really does. Yeah. Um, oh, these, nice these are shot just with the, the rainbow uh, mm -hmm. wand. Again, I don't know if that's what you call it. I call it the rainbow wand. I just find it really good. It's probably a color card or something. I'm not sure. But um, transparent color card, I'm not sure. But the the effects that it gives are really good. And, you know, I just, I find that putting these images, you know, even online, the people that are looking at and thinking, you know, like I mentioned the NHS in my video, and really, like people are using the rainbow symbol now. You know, for the current situation that we're in, uh, and you know, every window around the, the place has a rainbow on it, and mm -hmm. I'm able to do that and photograph so easy now just with this one wand. You know, it's really really good actually. Um, but again, there's Harry. That's mm -hmm. that's the normal Harry. They're always laughing and joking. Um, <laughs> I uh, I put this video online, and my wife said to me, Stephen. Why did you? Uh, why did you do this? Whenever like the, the kids are like you know looking like uh, they just th been through together, and I was like, well, they do because it was me that changed them. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> and she's very particular, and I was like, do you know what? They're fine. We're on lockdown. Everybody looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't need the hair doing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, you know, hasn't had his hair cut in eight weeks. <laughs> Oh, they're, they're a great collection. So is your plan basically to sort of really get to understand how the ones react or the, you know, the results you get, and then you're going to start employing them in your professional capacity as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I'm just going to keep trying to take some pictures, maybe not every day in lockdown, mm -hmm. but every, every other day maybe. And uh, yeah, I just want to have a real good solid collection of images, but the, you know, the, the purpose really is that, but at the end of the day, I'll go back to my main job, mm -hmm. quite co confident and competent, and, and using these. And I won't, and it, I won't have to use the the glasses or um, the champagne flits or the anything anymore because I've got quite a small pouch in my bag that holds everything. Really. Yes. <laughs> no more cut fingers. That's I was right. actually I was actually speaking to the founder of Lens Baby, Craig Strong, just the other week. And he was saying that a lot of wedding photographers, what they tend to do is shoot the, you know, the regular images, the straight images, just with the normal lenses, and then swap to using a lens baby, or maybe um, swap to using the Omni to get the, so you've got the safe shots, and then you carry on and you get the creative stuff. Is that how you would work, or would you go straight for the creative stuff? Um, no, I would say, Tristan, that I always do the safe stuff first. And I've mm. learned to do that even, you know, whenever I, I use off-camera flash quite a lot, but um, I always do the safe stuff first. Um, and it's like the safe stuff to me is getting a handful of images that um, um, that clients need. And for example, I just every client wants a photograph of them standing beside each other, looking into the camera. And I, before the wedding, if you asked them, they probably wouldn't care. But after the wedding, I know that they want that standard shot. And I see if, if I was to concentrate on getting really out there stuff, and they, um, I know that they would be wondering, have you got, have you just got a picture of like just us, you know? So that, that it's, it's more important for me to do that first and to get that 
because wedding days are so spontaneous. You just don't know what's going to happen and you can't really plan ahead. So say, always put the safe ones in first and then be creative after that. And if you do that, you find you have more time because everything's structured. These wee things are just, you can see if I hold them up, to, you can see how small they are. Mm. They're, they're yeah. tiny, you know, so they're so, so good. Yeah. It just occurred to me while you're talking there that I bet you could get some great results, you know, of the of the dance floor, because you you, you know, with all the coloured lights stretching uh, all over the place, that could perfect. be great. Fun. That that is the perfect place to use this. It really mm. is, you know. And the reality of a uh, dance floor is sometimes uh, you have on certain weddings quite a large open space and a band which are quite far away and maybe and nobody standing around the dance floor and you know tables with handbags hanging over the back of the chairs and drinks and you know that's a perfect situation to cover them you know it really is because mm -hmm. it means you've got to create some sort of disco at home to practice that well we could do that absolutely <laughs> <laughs> as long as i'm the one behind the camera and not the one that has to dance i'll be i'll be okay with that <laughs> <laughs> get you boys on the dance floor uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephen, it's been lovely speaking with you. Thanks very much for explaining how you've been creating these images. They look really great. No problem. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed being on. Great. Um, always a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. <laughs>